Hello everybody, I'm here for the Hammer Game Channel and welcome back to the New Order Last Days Europe and to my Purified Aryan Brotherhood playthrough where today we're, uh, well, we're starting our second journey and the second playthrough, we're splitting it off. Uh, I have went ahead and just done these uh, focuses up here at the top, these lot, uh, just so we can then just focus today. This will be a shorter episode of course, uh, we'll sort through the Aryan Slav route and the, uh, the way to freedom because uh, then that should hopefully get rid of uh, Wagner. So let's start with expanded definition of Aryan. As difficult, actually, let's just start it so I can progress it. Uh, as difficult as it for, is for many in the Brotherhood to accept, it has come clear that the lines between the races is not as defined as we once thought. While there are countless slabs who display the weakness and cowardice that marks them as Untermensch, there are many others that display, that display the reliance and motivation we thought was only found among the mass of race. The Brotherhood used to explain this phenomenon by saying the slabs demonstrate Aryan characteristics. We either actually Aryans that have been indoctrinated, indoctrinated by the subhumans or Slavs attempting to deceive the Ubermensch by intimidating them, uh, um, imitating, and imitating them. As our reach has expanded, we have encountered increasing numbers of proud Slavs displaying the qualities we expect from Brotherhood members. Schultz and his supporters have put forth an explanation for this bizarre phenomenon. It is possible to be both Slavic and Aryan. This goes completely against the established beliefs of the Brotherhood, but if it is true, it could pave the way to our salvation. If the Slavic peoples can be convinced to embrace Aryanism as part of their heritage, the mass race will finally have full control of Russia. We must expand our criteria for Aryanism to allow those Slavs worthy of the to earn their spot among our ranks. I almost cancelled that there. Uh, let's go ahead. And so a lot of the tech that I'm researching is going to be identical to what I was doing in my other playthrough, because we need it anyways. So... Let's just have a wee look here. I do need to... Oh, the Brotherhood needs blood. We need it. Let's get up here. Up there. Right, sorted. Uh, the Brotherhood needs blood. Does it now? Right, anyways, a long road. We cannot simply admit every Slav into the Brotherhood and pronounce them a, a, an Aryan overnight. The Slavic bloodline has been affected by outside uh, Asiatic races that cultivate uh, societies of corruption to generous hate. It was this infest infection that caused us to mistake the Slavs for Untermensch for so long. The children of Russia must remain, uh, want to reclaim the purity and supremacy of their race. And they must purge the non aryan elements of their culture. They will not be alone in their mission, for there is full of proud men who are exemplars of Aryan culture, uh, virtues that are willing to help Slavs rediscover the ways of the Untermensch. Together we will restore the Slavic peoples to Aryan ideal that they once embodied. The first step will be to purge Russia of its uh, decadence. Uh, true Aryans live a life of restraint and moderation, surviving on only what they need and happily sacrifice in personal comfort for their society's betterment. All of Russia must learn to live this way. The Slavs will suffer greatly as we strip them of their belongings and their uh, comfort, but this cannot be avoided. They must earn their purity through hardship, and we will cleanse their bloods, their bloods pollution in a trial of fire. Broaden the criteria. For his conquest of Russia we, uh, was both inevitable and a miracle. It was inevitable because we are Aryans, and Aryans cannot be defeated. It was a miracle because, by the old standards of Brotherhood, Aryans were an incredible rare breed in Russia. As meant, our pool of available Aryan fighting men was very shallow, and manpower shortages were a constant worry for, uh, to our commanders. Now that we have expanded Aryanism's definition to include Slavs that can prove their superior blood, a solution to this issue has, been, has presented itself. The recruitment standards of the Brotherhood's Aryan military units should be expanded to match the definition followed by the rest of the Brotherhood. This would open up membership to the hundreds of thousands of young Russian men looking to prove their worth and make a living. Even if not all of them prove to be worth, uh, worthy stock, many more of them will, and our nation will finally have enough men to feel a truly grand army worthy of the Aryan people. This army, the living embodiment of Aryan Slavic supremacy, will sweep east and liberate the children of Russia from the false Slavs that uh, tyrannise them now. Okay, but a wonderful reward. Uh, our efforts to accept more worthy Aryans and, uh, as members of the mass races have begun to pay off. All across Russia, more Ubermensch are being inducted into Brotherhood every day, and the morale of our new members is skyrocketing as they are now allowed to keep some aspects of the old Slavic culture that we have deemed Aryan. As our membership expands, the people of Russia accept us as their rightful masters who will lead them out of the darkness. It is time to start preparing for the next generation of Slavic Aryan rule. The most important duty of an Aryan woman is to raise as many Aryan children as she can to help guarantee the numerical superiority of the master race. This is especially important in our realm, where despite expanding our criteria, the subhumans still outnumber the Aryans almost two to one. Brotherhood will start a nationwide fertility program, teaching women about their maternal obligations and the importance of uh, serving as many 
children as they can. Offer rewards including extra rations, financial incentives to mothers who are more have more than two children with greater and greater prizes the more children a mother has. The Aryan mothers of our nation will secure our people's future in the East. Aaron Redemption. News of the Brotherhood accepted slabs into its ranks and spread throughout the populace, and the Brotherhood has received a flood of membership applications. Many of the applicants are quite promising and display all the qualities of pure Aryans, but others still carry the weakness and inferiority that corrupt the Slavic race for so long. Uh, these specimens are simply unfit to be members of our Brotherhood and the Aryan race. They are not completed without hope. We have already seen how some Slavs uh, resisted the po uh, pollution of their blood. We will give them uh, get, we will give their breath a chance to redeem themselves, to clear the infections within them and reclaim the Aryan heritage. Through service in the military and the factories, these Slavs shall learn what it means to be Aryan. And develop the work ethic, and, uh, the perseverance and the loyalty required to be part of the master race. Only when they have proven their co uh, purity and devotion to the cause of the race will they be redeemed. And will their, uh, with the redemption, we will welcome them with open arms. Right, you're outdated, AK-47. Welcome again to... Uh, to to our production line, racial salvation across Russia, a new age is dawning. Every day, more Slavs are throwing off their burdens of the past and embracing their future as a proud part of the Aryan race. Most members of the Brotherhood would have considered them possibly even impossibility. Even a year ago, now seems within reach. The children of Russia have been reclaimed after centuries of being corrupted and oppressed. The Brotherhood has finally led them back into the light. Right, and redemptions there. Uh, there is still much work to be done. It will take decades to fully undo the stains left by centuries of Untermensch rule. Some in our government worry that Schultz has misled the Brotherhood and has strayed from the teaching of the Germans, but they are wrong. Millions of uplifted Aryans in our nation prove that the German invasion was both a, po both a powerful example of the mass race's might and perhaps the greatest tragedy in the history of our race. While the Muscadi Germans sought to destroy their fellow Aryans, the Brotherhood is not so foolish. As Übermensch, it is our duty to rescue all who are worthy of belonging to our race. The Brotherhood's most important mission is to see the Slavic race restored. Russia will be proudly Aryan and proudly Slavic, and will stand alongside the German Aryans as twin examples of the true master race. And the way to freedom, as difficult as it is, we must face facts. There are too many of the Untermensch to be enslaved, and not enough of the Ubermensch to serve as masters. Trying to force a slave society onto Russia would only be repeating the mistakes of the Tsars and the Bolsheviks, where Aryan government cannot be allowed to collapse as those regimes did. The entire fate of our bloodline depends upon the Brotherhood securing a permanent home for the race in Russia. As long as there are slaves, uh, slaves, as long as there are slaves, uh, there is a risk of uprising, and as long as there is risk of uprisings, our people will never be safe. She also drafted a plan that would put an end to enslavement and allow the current slaves to work their way to freedom over the next few years. Well, it is far from the ideal system the Fuhrer first envisioned so many years ago, and will maintain the superior position of the master race in our society, while also allowing for even a modicum of long-term stability. Seems that, at least for the moment, this is all we can hope for. Long is the way and hard. Even the reformers that pushed for the slave race's liberation were not insane enough to suggest that subhumans would just be cut free to do as they want, despite how their opponents in the Fuhrer's inner circle may have characterised them. Every Aryan knows that the Udern Untermesh has still slothless, slothful generic creatures that need to be motivated to work. The Emancipation Plan is designed around this fact. Slaves will need to complete a certain amount of work to enter freedom, and the few rights that will come with it. The specific amount of work required will be determined by the type of labour involved, but it will equate to roughly three or four years of work in this field. Uh, do, 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 do. The faster the work is completed, the more quickly freedom is earned. This will be this will allow the younger and stronger slaves to earn their freedom more quickly, and through more dangerous work such as the munitions plants or textile mills. Weaker slaves, the children, the elderly, and the sickly will need more time to complete their work, meaning the slaves that pose less of a threat to their masters will remain under direct control for much longer. Of course, if too many valuable slaves are earning their freedom, no one can stop us from extending their enslavement as long as it is needed. Not of the kindness of heart. Some within the Brotherhood worry that the leadership has gone soft. They say the Fuhrer has been corrupted by pro-Slavic traitors. What foolishness. Empathy is weakness and the Aryan race is not weak. We have not shown mercy to the subhumans by granting an opportunity for freedom. We are working them harder than ever before, reaping every increasing reward as they toil for the benefit of the Ubermensch. The decision to end slavery was not made because of the childish eh, altruism, but because it was necessary, an efficient step to guarantee the survival of our people. No true Aryan would have done anything different, and those who question the decision have exposed themselves as race traitors. 
They are not fueled by a love of their blood, but by a hatred for their Undermesh. Undermesh are unquestionably despicable, but the first priority must always be our race and whatever is best for it. Beginning today, anyone who doubts whether we should free the slaves will be given the chance to see for themselves what a slave's life is like. By the time they are free again, they will doubtlessly come around to our view of things. That out of hell leads up to the light. Across our nation, news is spreading of the chance for freedom. Millions of slaves are working at breaking pace all hours of day and night, fueled by the hope that they might be able to reclaim even a shred of their freedom. Our production numbers have increased almost across the board. Increased almost across the board. Everything from farm to mills to munition plants have shown increased output as formerly slothful slaves have begun working at a frantic pace. We should encourage this behaviour from the Untermensch, publicly promoting stories of workers who have already earned their freedom and encouraging them uh, to speak about the wonders of the emancipation will prove that the promise of freedom is not just a rumour or a lie spread by the Brotherhood. Alright, with that done, I guess we'll go ahead and do mass production methods too. Uh, the slaves know that the road for their, to their freedom is not easy or safe. The recent increase in work-related fatalities is evidence of that, enough of that. They do not care. As long as we dangle a chance of liberation in front of them, they will do whatever it takes to reach it. The goal of this program was never to free all the slaves. It was to free the worthy and destroy those who are not, so far as working spectacularly. The strength of will. We have offered the Untermensch a chance to demonstrate their worth to us. The Aryan Brotherhood cannot afford to run the slave state, and we will not tolerate leeches and parasites within our society. The former slaves now have a simple task. Prove they deserve to live, and live free of that, or die. A certain willpower is required to thrive under the rule of the Brotherhood, and this willpower is not exclusive to the Ubermensch. No subhuman is equal to the Aryan, but not of every subhuman is equally vile. There are those that can stand tall and provide for both themselves and the state, possessing certain Aryan qualities. Even if they themselves might not be of Aryan in blood, then there are the others that are too weak to do this, who are truly the lowest of the low. The freedom we are offering is a reward for those strong enough to claim it. Those who cannot achieve it will suffer what they must. The Brotherhood is a building a nation of Ar for their Aryan race, but Russia is a vast land, and we will find room in it for any who can match our people's strength and aid our cause. Okay. Alright. I feel like this is a much... Well, it's not a nicer route, let's be honest, but it's a little bit better than... Uh, Wagner's. It's not as um, brutal towards them. It's still brutal, but they have a sense of freedom that is keeping them going. Every day there are fewer slaves in our nation. Alone and in small groups, they have granted the hard-earned freedom they have strived for. The freedom to choose their future. Of course, the Brotherhood has ensured that their options are limited to the few promising opportunities. A newly emancipated slave could go work on an area owned farm, where their supervised labour would be well paid in housing and food. Or if agriculture isn't to their liking, they could move to one of the revitalised urban jewels of the Brotherhood. Work in a factory to assemble products for the Aryan race. Their payment in scrip will be generous and redeemable the Brotherhood stores. No matter where their newfound freedom takes them, the Untermensch will never have to worry about being unsupervised. Every career available is overseen by Aryan supervisors, responsible for organising and commanding their workers. Freed or enslaved, it is their duty to sacrifice for the good of the Aryans. The subhumans will doubtlessly be confronted by the realisation that this new life is not so different from the life they already know. And of course that will lead us on to the Clash of the Gods. And that will lead us nicely onto the end of the episode as well. So I think we should go in here and do, 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 do. let's invest in some infrastructure. Uh, where's the academic? Oh, weekly manpower, uh, the poverty rate, and the academic base. I think we'll invest in all of those for the time being. Ah, it's going well for us. I can't wait to also have Schultz. It's going to be fun playing as Schultz as well, I think. It's going to be nice playing as both of them. Just checking out both routes that are available. Now, there is the chance, remember, that Goring will attack us. If he actually decides to actually do anything in regards to the war plan. He's started it. He's not done anything about it, though. Yes. I, I don't know what he, he's playing at. We need blood. And blood I shall give them. Where is it? The Rite of Ascension. The Gibraltar Dam officially finished. <gasps> no way, Franco. No way, Jose. He's completed the dam. It's such a nice national spirit once it's completed. 10 construction speed, minus 5 resources in the market, and minus 20 consumer goods. Pretty, pretty tasty. You just have to complete it first. 
and with all the hardship that comes with doing that. Right, let's get the basic motorized equipment researched. Come on. We're so close now to getting Schultz. And now, of course, we'll... Actually, do you know what? We'll maybe invade the Urals in this episode as well. We might do that. Possibly. I'll see how I feel. Do we want to invest in construction as well? That's industrial equipment. I'm just kind of investing everything just because we could do with them. Um, Sorting a lot of this stuff out, because there's a bad, a lot of bad stuff. We need to sort that out. So the Aryan Slav is taking a war support, but that's actually quite nice. And you're actually pretty good as well. I don't give a crap about that civilian to military factory conversion cost, because that's a feature of the game I do not bloody use at all. Ah! The Great Caucasian Revolt. Lubov Lysenko and Jivi. Okay, we'll see how you get on. Uh, oh. Probably can you praying. Yeah, I don't know what Goring's getting up to, but he's not really doing much. Anyways, a clash of gods. A clash of gods. We'll probably a Kazakhstan one again. Well, I said, Bennett, what are you actually doing? The last bastion of liberty. I might come play as a US soon, possibly. Wonder who's going to win the Congo. Oh. And so, the Africa Shield is... Well, it's no more. It's just a shadow of his former self. Savimbi. Just makes me think of Call of Duty Black Ops 2, where he's in that one mission at the start. Yeah, I don't care about that book again. We, we really don't care. Oh, six days. Six days until we say goodbye to Wagner. Your time has come to beat your end. Wait, we have a little bit of democracy in here? Ah. Gudrun Wagner hunched over his desk, reading a memo without understanding it. His mind was elsewhere. His control of the Brotherhood was slipping away. Every day it seemed like his title of Führer was more and more ceremonial, while Schultz and his gang were given the orders. Something had to be done. He could not allow them to destroy the Aryan race, not when it was so close to victory. He heard the door to his office open, and he looked up. Startled, he was a, he had ordered his guards not to let anyone interrupt him. Standing in the doorway was Schultz, there at him. Siegfried, what are you doing here? I'm not taking appointments now. Go find my secretary if you want to meet Shaw walked towards him, his hands clutched behind his back, not speaking a word. He wasn't even looking at Wagner, he was surveying the office. I don't know what the fuck you think you're doing, but I am out of patience with you. You have five seconds to get out of my sight before my guards go and teach you not to interrupt me again. Schultz met his gaze, and Wagner noticed something had changed. The calm, arrogant attitude he usually had was gone. His eyes were wide, and there was sweat on his forehead. He began walking towards the desk. Wagner pressed a button underneath his desk, and would call the guards to his room. We have let your tyranny continue for too long, Gudrun. Schultz finally spoke in a hoarse whisper as he rounded to the desk. You have butchered and enslaved the true Aryans and worshipped the Jewish puppets in Germany. It cannot go on. The race must survive. Wagner slammed the button again and again, but no one came. He started to open the drawer where he kept his pistol, but it was too late. Schultz pulled the dagger from behind his back and plunged it into his neck. A stream of blood sprayed across the wall as Wagner fell to the floor. After a moment, it was all over. Schultz wiped the blood from his face and turned towards the door when the guards were watching him. Are you all right, sir? The man asked. Yes, it is done. So Gutra and Wagner dies. A, a, a different party becomes a ruling party. Ultranationalism takes over. The high priest. Uh, three guys retire. We get a guy who becomes a general. We get a new cabinet. And we will now be called Hyperborea. Boom. And I'm going to have to change the thumbnail for this video now. Damn it. But there we go. Ancient lessons. That's a very interesting pattern there. Okay. The army of pure. And of course, into the world. We stand alone as definitely. We're going to denounce them. We are totally going to denounce, denounce them. But what I'll do is, we'll exert our influence in the Urals. I love our shade. I love our shade of purple. It is fantastic. And launch military intervention. But there we go, guys. I'm going to leave that episode there. So it was a shorter one, but not as short as I thought it was going to be. So Hyperborea is here. Schultz, the High Priest. Velamir, sorry. Velamir. Okay. He's here. Um, yeah. 
we're gonna sort out uh, well we'll see where it leads rather i don't know what's gonna happen but i'm very intrigued to find out so yeah now we'll have two episodes each day with uh, you know the different routes and um, so yeah thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed i'll be back very soon for some more until then take care sure bye then now